One of the cool things about studying fossils is any new fossil find can completely transform our understanding of the fossil record. And that's exactly what's going on with the recent discovery of Homo naledi and our understanding of human evolution. Now we're going to talk about Homo naledi. This is the most recently named species in human evolution. Um, and what's really cool is there are a lot of different fossils. So there's a, a lot of material here we get to talk about. But let's first start talking about the cave itself. So Homo naledi was discovered by spelunkers. Um, this happens from time to time. And hopefully if a spelunker discovers some human fossils, they know who to get in contact with. Um, so this is especially interesting because you can see it is quite a trek to get to Dina Letty chamber where the bones actually are. So first you have to, you know, go through the cave, make it through the Superman's crawl, which is less than 10 inches high. So to start, like not everybody's getting in there. Then you have to make it up the dragon's back and then you just have this drop, this very narrow, almost straight drop into Dina Letty chamber. It is not easy to get in here. Um, when they made the announcement looking for people to help them excavate this site, they actually had like very specific measurements. Like you need to be small enough to get through this tiny hole. Um, and actually all of the excavators they chose were women because there just aren't many men who are small enough to fit through these places. Um, and what's interesting is in Dina Lenny chamber, there are so many bones. But unlike pretty much any other fossil site, it is just hominins. This is weird because in other, other situations, you would expect like there to be a mouse or I don't know, a wild boar, something to give an idea of the ecology of the environment that this is found. If it's just hominins, well, that that suggests something more intentional. And that's just one of the reasons that Homo naledi is weird and surprising. Um, and it is also just so cool that there are so many bones here. But let's take a little bit of a closer look. So Homo naledi is a relatively young species. So it's about 335 to 236,000 years old. Um, we have some crania. Here we have some mandibles. Um, we've got some nice mandibles there. Got a parabolic tooth row. Um, you, those teeth look relatively modern, you know, smaller than um, Australopithecus. Um, we also have some postcrania. So we have some um, femoral looking fairly bipedal, nice, nice straight tibias. We also have some postcrania. So here we have some feet with that big toe, very in line with the rest of the toes and also um, pretty large. So that's a good indicator of bipedality. Um, if you can see the hands there, the phalanges are very short, which is similar to us. And you can see that longitudinal arch in the foot there. Um, if you're looking at the vertebral column, you know, they are smaller, but overall Homo naledi just has a small body size. Um, so Homo naledi is really interesting because it has these kind of modern features like its cranial shape um, looks homo-like. It has relatively long legs like Homo erectus. Um, its hands and feet very human-like, but its brain is very small. That's strange. Its body is very small and it still has a primitive hip joint. So it's this weird mix of things that look very modern or derived, but then these other things which are more primitive and not like modern humans. And also just thinking back to how weird it is, um, because it is only hominin fossils here, some people are wondering if it is intentional burial or they were like checking bodies through, <laughs> through the shoot there. Um, that is, of course, over-sensationalized, but we do have to have to answer the question of just how did the bodies get there? Because it wasn't, um, uh, it wasn't a death trap like some of the other sites where it was easy for um, people to accidentally fall down these holes. Um, it does not appear that would have happened for this particular cave site. Um, it's also interesting to compare Homo naledi to some of the other forms. So, um, 
Homo floresiensis, we've been aware of that guy for uh, much longer than Homo naledi. Um, but like floresiensis, Homo naledi is small bodied and um, even though its brain is much larger. So here we're looking at several different um, small bodied forms, Homo habilis, Homo floresiensis, Homo naledi, and comparing them to Homo erectus, since that's kind of this, uh, one of the standards we like to measure things by since they were around for so long. And um, all of them have a few differences here, but it's uh, causing us to reconsider the idea that all later Homo were larger body size. So that there are more examples of just smaller bodied hominins that do have more modern features. Um, we're still figuring out how to fit Homo naledi within our understanding of human evolution just because they are so new. Um, but this is one of the ways that it's making us reconsider our ideas that everything was just trending towards larger bodies and larger brains because we're getting some examples of things that were not quite this quite that way. And also because it's so late in time, it's possible that Homo naledi actually coexisted with the very earliest um, Homo sapiens in Africa. Um, of course, more fossils and better dating of all of these sites will give us a better idea of what's going on, um, but this is a pretty new and exciting fossil find. So can you explain? Who is Homo naledi? And how is this new discovery changing our understanding of hominin evolution? Mm -hmm.